Now that we've finished discussing the conduction system of the lungs, let us now talk about the respiratory section. This is where we are seeing that exchange of gases between the lungs and the blood. So a reminder that the entire purpose of the conduction system that we've been discussing previously, that is nose, mouth, pharynx, larynx, trachea, and our bronchioles getting all the way down to our terminal bronchioles and our respiratory bronchioles. Once we get to that point that the entire purpose of that was to warm, humidify, and filter the air as well as making sure it gets to this section of the lungs. Now that we've gotten there, we can now begin respiration. So what we see here is our bronchioles coming down into the alveolar sacs. Now these alveolar sacs is where the pulmonary capillaries are found. Now, a reminder of what we did back in series one, when we were talking about the pulmonary and systemic circuit of the heart. When we were looking at the right hand side of the heart and looking how it goes from atria to ventricle and then through those pulmonary arteries, arterioles, and then goes to the lungs. What I sort of said there was it goes to the lungs and then gas exchange occurs. And I didn't go into any further detail. This is where we're going to explore a little bit further that detail in terms of that gas exchange that is occurring in the lungs because that is where the blood is going with respect to the pulmonary circuit. So what are the alveoli exactly? They are essentially these air filled pockets that are found within the lungs. And as the air is coming down and entering these air pockets, what we can see is that on the outside, they are completely layered in these blood vessels here in these capillaries. And we want to maximize the amount of contact that the capillaries have with these alveoli to ensure that we can maximize the amount of exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now looking at our alveoli, they are comprised of three main types of cells. We have our type one alveolar cells, our type two alveolar cells, and our alveolar macrophages. So let's start at the beginning. What are these type one alveolar cells? These are simple squamous cells that create the bulk of our alveoli. And the reason why we want these simple squamous epithelial cells is that we want them to be really thin. We only want one single thin layer around the alveoli because again, we're using it to exchange substance. We're using it to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. So we don't want to have a heap of different layers here hindering that movement. The second type of our alveolar cells are our surfactant secreting cells. So what surfactant does is it lowers the surface tension within the lungs to make it easier for us to breathe. Now it does this by interrupting these hydrogen bonds that occur between water molecules that can kind of glue them together by minimizing that. Now to be clear, it doesn't get rid of it. It just minimizes it. It means that we are able to expand and open up our lungs easier. This is a very, very critical thing to ensure we are able to breathe easily. And the third and final one are our alveolar macrophages. Now these macrophages are the police force. They're the cleaners. They're the security. They, they're the all in one. And what they do is, is if there's any debris or any inhaled particles or anything like that, that has managed to make its way down into the alveoli, this is where these macrophages will help to clean it up. Now, what is also important to keep in mind here is that the membrane of the capillary and the membrane of our simple squamous cell that we see in our alveoli, they are fused together to form this basement membrane. So why, why would it do that? Purely to make sure that those capillaries stay there. The last thing that we want is for those capillaries to fall off or to, to sheath off or something along those lines. By fusing them together, it means that they are held securely in place and can facilitate that movement of gases. So if we were to look at the movement of, let's say oxygen from the point of breathing, it's going to move in through our nose, through that nasal cavity, past our pharynx, down past our larynx, through our trachea, then it's gonna split off into our bronchioles, go all the way down into our alveoli. Then what's going to happen is that it's going to move through this simple squamous epithelial cell, then pass through the basement membrane of that simple squamous epithelial cell. It's then going to pass through the basement membrane of the capillary. Then it's going to move into the capillary to which oxygen can then move inside of our red blood cell. 
which is also called an erythrocyte, and then it can begin its transport around the body. And this is the process in which our red blood cells become oxygenated. Now, when it comes to the diffusion of carbon dioxide, it's the same pathway, but just in reverse because it's going from the red blood cell out of our nose or mouth. So now that we've briefly covered looking at the main structures of the conduction and the respiratory system, and we've covered the movement of oxygen and CO2, what we're going to explore in our next video is looking at the physical process of breathing and how we are able to mechanically achieve this.